Hi, and welcome to More Human, More Resources, the HR podcast for entrepreneurs. I'm Vicki Brown, your host and CEO of Vidominale Enterprises. As a serial entrepreneur, I understand that having the right expert help has been critical to my success. That's why I'm dedicated to telling you, in plain language, what's going on in the world of HR that might impact your business and what you need to do about it with real actionable tips to help you master that list of must-dos and grow your leadership muscle. First things first, the information contained in this podcast is provided for general purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Your decision to adopt or not adopt any practice or procedure mentioned in this podcast is solely yours and we bear no responsibility for the outcome. We urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. And with that, let's get into the show. You're listening to Season 1, Episode 4, Hourly, Salary, Exempt, Non-Exempt. You hear these terms all the time, but what the heck do they mean? Well, when most people say someone is hourly, they mean the person is paid by the hour versus getting a flat weekly or annual amount, so $15 per hour versus $60,000 a year. Now, this is just the definition of how you're paying the person, but it's important to understand that how you pay someone has to be determined by the what of their classification. Is their job classified as non-exempt or exempt? So you're probably saying, what? Well, the people responsible for the regulations around employment, you know, the Department of Labor, the IRS, your local state employment departments, well, they consider everyone who works in the U.S. as eligible for overtime. That is unless your job is exempt from the overtime rules. See, that's how they get exempt, meaning exempt from overtime rules, and non-exempt, meaning not exempt from the overtime rules. So, How do you know if your job is exempt from the overtime rules? Well, the feds and even some states put together specific guidelines that a job has to meet in order to qualify as exempt from overtime. Everybody gets in on setting the rules because when you pay overtime, you also have to pay payroll taxes on top of the overtime amount. And to put it mildly, the IRS wants their payroll taxes. There are six exempt categories. Now keep in mind, you have to see how the job stacks up against the exempt categories to figure out if it qualifies as exempt, again, meaning not eligible for overtime, or non-exempt, meaning eligible for overtime. The categories are executive, administrative, professional, computer professional, outside sales, and highly compensated. I'll give you a quick overview of each category, but keep two things in mind. Number one, I am absolutely certain that you have a much larger number of non-exempt employees than you think you have. I know this because it's almost always the case. This is the most common misclassification, classifying a job as exempt when it should be non-exempt. And number two, I cannot impress upon you strongly enough that you need to be very careful before you classify a job as exempt. Don't be shy about reaching out to your labor attorney, and yes, you should have one, if you can't figure it out. This is not a good calculation to get wrong. It can be very expensive. All right, back to the exemption categories. First up, executive. Among other things, the person must direct the work of at least two or more other full-time employees. So that means having the authority over them to hire or fire them, giving them work, evaluating their performance, and they also have to be paid a minimum amount. Now at the federal level, that amount in 2020 is $684 a week. But remember when I said some states have their own guidelines? Well, California is one of those states, and the minimum salary level in California for an exempt level employee is twice the minimum wage on a weekly basis. In English, that means if the California minimum wage is $20 an hour, and it isn't, but that's going to make this math a lot easier, then the weekly amount would be $20 times 40 hours, which equals $800. So that means in California, you would have to pay an exempt level person at least twice that amount, 
or $1,600 a week. Next, the administrative category. And no, this doesn't mean administrative assistant. The administrative exemption is for jobs that involve management of your or your customers' general business operations. It also has the minimum salary requirement we talked about earlier. And on top of all of that, there's a special phrase that the regulators use. Includes the exercise of discretion and independent judgment with respect to matters of significance. Now, everybody always asks me what that means. And it's such a hazy statement, I have to refer them directly to the Department of Labor's explanation. We'll put a link in the show notes. Onward to the next category, professional. This category also isn't necessarily what it sounds like. Sure, we're all professionals, or at least we try to be, but this exemption category is for learned professionals. So among other things, the job must require advanced knowledge in a field of science or learning, kind of like a CPA. Now, let me be clear. If you have a bookkeeping job, but the person you have in the job is a CPA, that does not mean the job meets the professional exemption. All these exemption categories apply to the minimum requirements for the position, not the knowledge or experience of a person who may have the job right now. If it isn't a requirement to hold a CPA, but it's a nice to have, I'm afraid that job is still considered non-exempt. And again, the professional exemption has the minimum salary requirement that we talked about earlier. By the way, there is also a subcategory of creative professional, but this generally applies to performers and artists. Next up, computer professional. This one is closer to what you think it is, but with a twist, of course. It's an analyst, computer programmer, or engineer, etc. It is not someone who manages and fixes workstations. This category also has minimum salary guidelines, but they're a bit different than the other categories. At the federal level, there's a weekly minimum and an hourly minimum. For California, there's an annual and monthly minimum. Surprisingly, the outside sales exemption is precisely what it sounds like. The job has to be sales done outside the employer's place of business. So if you have someone doing cold calls from your office, that would not qualify. And finally, the highly compensated position. If the position pays, again, as of 2020, $107,432 per year or more, it's considered exempt from overtime by the federal government, but not by the state of California. We don't have a highly compensated exemption category, so that means, oddly, someone could, in theory, make $200,000 a year and still be eligible for overtime if they didn't meet one of the other exemption categories. I know, strange but true. Circling back to our original question, you can see now that whether someone is paid hourly or salary is really determined by their classification of exempt or non-exempt. And beyond the pay, there are other rules around dealing with exempt and non-exempt employees. A few additional words. As I mentioned, the minimum qualifications for the job must meet the exempt category requirements. Neither you nor the employee can choose to make the position exempt. It has to meet one of the exemption categories. However, you can choose to make a job that would otherwise be exempt, non-exempt, because the feds don't care if you choose to pay someone overtime. And don't forget to reach out to your labor attorney if you get stuck. Links to the Department of Labor and the California exemption categories and salary minimums are listed in the show notes. If you found this information helpful, please leave a review and tell a friend. Thanks for spending the time. Until next week, same time, same place.